Hey everyone, I just did like a 50 minute video about um, things that I look for when I'm about to begin a sword fight with somebody. Uh, and I just thought that, hey, you know what, let me just give you guys a really fast kind of table of contents uh, so that you can kind of figure out if you're interested in watching the rest of the video on that. So, so things that I talk about in this video as far as what I like, what I want to observe out of my uh, opponent when I'm about to fight him. First of all, are they righty or lefty? Okay, because that's going to tell me something about which side the attacks are more likely to come from. Okay? Uh, something about their height and their weight. I want to observe that, right? And I want to know basically uh, what their reach is, what angles they're capable of attacking me from, uh, and also what their speed is likely to be. Okay. Uh, next, I want to observe the armor that they're wearing and the quality, uh, and that includes lack of armor. Okay, so is this person wearing armor or not wearing armor? Um, and and it's, because that's going to tell me about something about how hard how hard I have to hit them. Okay, or if there's certain areas that are just not going to be accessible because you know you can't cut through plate. All right. Um, and also the quality of the armor is going to tell me something or may tell me something about their experience level. Okay, is this guy? Uh, dressed like a beginner that's just starting or is this guy or this person dressed like somebody that's been fighting for a while okay so that's how that's going to give me an indication as to that uh, next I want to look at the sword itself I mean obviously I'm taking a quick glance at it from a distance uh, but you know through experience I'm going to know uh, what the sword looks like and how you know how is it likely to move okay so is this a, a sword that favors cutting or is it a sword that favors thrusting? Uh, is it a sword that requires um, lots of, uh, you know, uh, hip action uh, and rotation, you know, uh, in order to get the sword moving with any power? Or is it like a light short sword that's going to move very quickly without the need uh, to activate the lower body to power the sword? Okay, so so I'm look, so that's what I'm looking for. Do I have a cutting sword or a thrusting sword? Uh, is it a fast sword? Or is it a long sword that has lots of reach? Okay. Uh, and the sword, that's also going to tell me something about the uh, the length of the sword is going to tell me something about the angles of f from which they're I'm likely to get attacked from. Okay. Uh, again, I'm going to talk about this in more detail in the video. I'm just kind of doing a quick kind of table of context. The next thing I want to look at is the shield. Okay. Uh, how is the shield strapped? Is it a, is it is it uh, a center grip when it, just holding it from the center, or or is it strapped forearm strapped? That's going to tell me something about the flexibility of the shield, how much the shield can be uh, manipulated. I want to look and see if there's what the edges of the shield are. Uh, are there any corners or is it roundish? Because uh, again, that's going to tell me something about how they are likely to block, um, you know, and and what uh, you know how I how I should be targeting them. Okay, so on the shield, I'm looking for how it's strapped. I'm looking for edges and corners. Okay, uh, next thing I want to do, right? Uh, I want to. At the start of the fight, I want to try and throw some probing shots out there. Uh, the probing shots are going to tell me something about how my opponent blocks. Okay, you know, do they do they do they only shield block, or they do they also sword block under certain conditions? Like maybe they they shield block the lower part of their body and they sword block their head, or maybe they do like a left right right where they 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 shield block the left side of their body and maybe sword block the right side of their body. Um, so, so these are the things I'm looking at and the, the way I'm going to figure that out is by throwing a couple of probing shots from the edge of the range to see what they do. Okay. Uh, is this a person that if you throw a shot at him, he's immediately going to charge in at you or, or immediately counter, or is it somebody that's just going to withdraw, pull back and, and, you know, and, 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 you know, and then come back in, uh, at his, at his leisure, you know, so, so how does a person react to you throwing shots at them? You want, you want to figure out. How they, you know, how they, re how they react to your attacks. Okay, so again, figure that out before you really get deep into the fight. Um, and finally, you want to try and figure out what their preferred range is. Okay, is this somebody that likes to fight up close? Is this somebody that likes to fight at the edge of the range and just take sniping attacks? Is this somebody that likes to fight in the medium range? Okay, so again, this is something that you can try to figure out early on. If you can figure this out early on in the fight, figure out what their preferred range is that they want to attack you from then you fight them from something other than what they would prefer to fight you in, right? So if they like to fight you at distance, you get in close, right? If they like to fight you up close, then you try to maintain some distance, okay? So I'm now going to give you guys 50 minutes of detail on all this stuff, uh, but now you kind of know what to expect and you can decide if you want to stick around for the rest of the video or fast forward to something that you might, you know, to any of these things over here. So I, I think that this little 
cable contacts would be useful for you guys. So thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about what observations I try to make uh, before I engage in a sword fight. Okay, so for those of you that have been following my channel, you know I posted a bunch of videos over a period of time where I'm fighting people with swords. Um, and sometimes we use wooden swords, sometimes we use steel blades. Uh, they're basically balanced so that they kind of function the same. So for example, this is a type 14 sword. It weighs about two pounds, 14 ounces. Balances right about there. That balance allows me to turn this sword over, okay, because I can pivot it on that balance point. So likewise, here's a, a similar sword that I have crafted. So this sword is meant to mimic the way that that sword moves. So again, the thing weighs about uh, uh, two pounds, 14 ounces balance point is right about there so again this allows me to turn the sword over uh, in a similar manner okay so um so you'll see me sometimes i'm fighting with uh, um with uh wooden swords and sometimes i'm fighting with uh steel blades like this okay so this is a blunt sword right there's no e there's no sharp edge on this there's a, a rubber tip over here so i can safely so i can safely uh attack and again this also has a similar balance point right about there and that again allows me to rotate the sword quickly from side to side like that okay so um all, all these are all valid training methods uh one of the things that generally happens is if i'm using a steel blade like this right because you, even though there's no sharp edge on this there's still a concentration of force over here right because whereas for example this sword over here right this is like an inch and a quarter in diameter so this spreads out the impact so when this hits this hits a, across a a bigger surface area whereas this even though it weighs about the same the force is concentrated on that on on this uh finer edge over here so even though it's not sharp you know i've got a piece of wood here okay there's a cut that I just made into this wood uh, with what is not even like an overly powerful blow. Okay, let me bring you guys in real quick. Okay, so that right there is the cut that I just made with a blunt sword, right? So that's what a blunt sword would do. So right, right away you can you know that a blunt sword is deadly, right? Because if I if I uh, were to hit somebody on the head right on, on on the bare head with that force uh, basically this would which this could kill them right or or at least you know it, it would basically crack their skull so even a um a blunt sword like this is dangerous so when i fight with blunt steel blades we use a lighter hitting calibration okay we don't hit each other as hard because we're using steel that can still concentrates the force uh when you see me fighting uh, usually in armor, right, and I'm using these type of swords, we're going full power, full speed, okay? So uh, there's always a cost benefit with the type of weapon that you're using, okay? Uh, the more real the sword looks, the more you kind of have to pull back on how hard you hit the other person. Whereas if you have something like this, which is, you know, designed to spread out the impact a little bit more, now you have the ability to, to like really go full power, full speed. Uh, and basically, with, even with this, we get some nice bruises, but we generally don't break any bones with this, okay? Um, so let's put this down for a minute. So, so that's the first thing I kind of wanted to put out there. I wanted to give you guys some context as to the type of fighting that we're doing, how we're not actually killing each other. Um, so going back to what I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, when I'm about to fight with somebody, again, this is somebody that I've not fought before, because if I've already fought the guy a hundred times, I already know what to expect with him. But if it's somebody that I'm fighting for the first time, uh, the first thing I want to try and figure out, are they righty or lefty, right? Is, are they holding the sword in their right hand or are they holding the sword in their left hand? Now, even if they're holding, let's say, a two-handed sword like this, if the right hand's up here, they're a righty. So they're going to, most of the cuts are going to be mostly coming to the right side. I mean, you can still tack to the left, but it's a lot more effort to cross the arms, right? You see how I'm crossing my arms? 
to attack to the left side, whereas to the right side, I can attack more easily. If, however, if I'm a lefty, if my left hand is leading here, you know, now I can more easily attack the left side. And when I get over here, now my hands have to cross. Okay, so this is a, uh, a, a more difficult attack. Okay, not that it's not an effective attack, but it's just a more difficult attack. I'm holding the sword in my lefty, in my left side, I'm going to favor attacking the left side. I'm holding the sword on my right side, I'm going to favor attacking the right side. Now, if you're holding a shield or a, a buckler, right, here I have, kind of pull this out because this is kind of like a, this is either a, a large buckler, okay, because this is, a, this is more like a standard size buckler. Uh, the purpose of this was kind of, this was a convenient, this is a com very convenient small shield that you can actually carry on your body, okay? Um, so that was kind of like the benefit of this. This is something that you would carry around in a town or a city. Um, something like this you might carry around on horseback because carrying something like this, I mean, this is something that you got, the only way to carry this, you got to more or less strap this to the back uh, because even on a, on a horse, something this big can be awkward. But this is something that I can easily hang off a horse uh, and travel around. So this is, uh, this is a... This is somewhere between the size of a, of a buckler and a full-size shield. And it's good because it can kind of do the job of both, although it doesn't do the job. Of, because remember, all these things specialize in trying to right? This is specialized for convenience, ease of travel. This is specialized for war, basically, right? Because you're not going to be walking around a town or a city with something like this. You know, this you can kind of take with you while you're traveling where you're not going to war. But, you know, if you run into some highway bandits, you know, you got something better than this little thing over here, okay? So, uh, with something like this, right, which is a little bit lo uh, larger, um, you will see if I'm going to attack, it is a lot easier for me to attack on my right side if I'm holding the sword in my right hand. Whereas if I'm going to attack here, you know, I have to basically, you know, you, you know I mean, there's a, like, for example, it's really hard for me to get down here. Okay, although there are techniques where I can come up and come down like this, but it's a lot easier for me to safely attack this side because if you see how I'm attacking, I'm keeping my hand behind my shield as I am attacking, right? So, so as soon as I go to the left side, I, I start becoming a little bit more limited. On the right side, I have many more comfortable options, okay? So the, so the first thing I want to know is, am I fighting a righty or lefty? Because that's going to give me an idea of what side it is going to be more convenient and easier for me for them to attack me on. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to know: a righty or a lefty. Uh, the next thing I want, and that usually, like, even if I got somebody that's like, charging at me, I can if I can see the sword, I can usually get a good sense of whether it's in their right hand or their left hand. Okay, the next thing I want to know is their height and weight. Okay. Uh, how tall are they? About how big are they? Okay. Um, uh, the first, the, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, if I got somebody that's like really tall and I know they got long arms, they uh, they could have a reach advantage on me. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to have an idea of what their what their reach capabilities are. Is it vastly different from mine? Are their arms going to be likely to be a lot shorter than mine, or are they likely to be longer than mine? Okay. So that's important. I want to know what their reach is. Well, also. Um, it's also going to tell me something about their angles. Okay, so for example, um, let me grab a sword here. If I am fighting somebody, okay, that is like way, way shorter than me, right? You know, let's say I got somebody that's like, I don't know, up to here, right? Right? Well, if I'm taller, I can more easily cut down at them, right? I can cut down at them. Uh, I have certain angles that I would not have if, if, if they were my height. Because if they're my height, now I gotta lift my hand further up to attack if I wanna make that low attack. So if I got somebody that's a lot shorter than me, I can I have certain angles that I would not have otherwise. Now, likewise, if somebody somebody who is shorter, right, shorter than you, uh, probably uh, it's easier for them to attack your legs, right, than it is to attack your head. So if I've got somebody that's shorter than me, uh, a good, you know, my, my first thing, my first thought, if they're significantly short than me, is they're going to probably try to attack my legs. If I've got somebody that's a lot taller than me, uh, they're more likely to want to attack my head, okay? Uh, now, with a trained fighter, right, who's been fighting for a long time, 
they're gonna try and do the opposite, right? Because it's kind of, you know, because they know that you're expecting, if they're, if they're tall, they know that you expect them to attack your head and are more likely to be covering high up here, right? I expect you to, like, as soon as I see a taller fighter, I'm immediately covering up here. Um, so what they're gonna do is uh, faint attacks up here so they can go to the low leg, right? So they're going to try and use uh, my knowledge or what I, th what I'm, my, my expectations against me, right? Likewise, if I'm fighting a short fighter, if it's a, uh, a very experienced short fighter, they're going to know that, that you're expecting them to attack low, so you're more likely to hold your guard a little bit lower like this. Um, so what they're going to do is they will attack you low to basically, you know, or faint attack you low, so then they can come up high and attack you somewhere else, okay? So an experienced fighter is going to try and use that against you. But anyway, that's one of the things I want to know is what their, what their um, you know, what their height and weight is, what angles I, sh I can be expecting them to attack me at. Um, and the other thing is, uh, uh, as far as as far as looking at their size, right? Looking at their weight, um, that's going to give me some idea as far as like how fast they're going to be as far as their movement, right? Because if I get somebody uh, that's let's say really thin, you know, uh, young, right? Sometimes you can see that they're young. You can expect that they might uh, want to move a lot more. Um, whereas if you find if you find somebody that's heavier, um, you might expect that they're going to try and conserve energy does not always work that way okay so it does not you know what you what you expect and what you get are sometimes two different things and sometimes fighters again will try to use your expectations against you but that's like one of the first things i want to look at right how, how big how big am i fighting how big is my fighter uh what's his what his what his reach is what angles are are going to be accessible to him uh and how fast i might expect him to be okay uh, so, moving on. The next thing I want to consider, right, is what armor are they wearing or not wearing, okay? Uh, are they wearing any armor at all? Um, so, I mean, obviously, if it's a combat sport, uh, where, you know, if, if, it's, if it's a sport where, let's say, when I'm fighting with the, in, the, in the game, when I'm fighting the SCA, for example, or the EMP, and we're using these type of swords, we're calibrated for male armor with a Norman nasal cap, okay? So against that type of armor, if you're wearing male, you cannot cut male with a sword like this, but if you strike the male hard enough, you can break bones through male, okay? So for that type of a combat, we're using a very percussive style. So likewise, if we're doing, uh, let's say we're doing like rapier combat or unarmored combat, uh, where the person is not calibrated for male, okay? Uh, then I know I don't, you know, I don't need to hit them hard, right? Um, if somebody's not wearing any armor, you know, you don't need to wind up and, and hit them hard. Uh, you, usually a lighter hit will, will do the job. So, so that's the first thing I want to know. What type of armor are they using? So I know how to calibrate against them. How hard do I have to hit them? Okay, that's, that's an important thing to know if you're going to fight somebody. Um, that's also going to tell me something about the targeting, okay? What areas can I target, okay? Um, there's sometimes I have done tournaments where it's armor as one, right? So if you're wearing male armor, uh, you're calibrated basically for male where you can use a percussive style. If you're wearing plate, uh, then you cannot hit the plates. That, that wouldn't be a killing ball. You have to basically target the openings in the joints. So basically armpits, face, groin area, back of the legs. So those would be the target areas. Basically the gaps between the armor, okay? So you need to know what the armor is so you know how hard to, you need to hit them and what areas you need to be targeting, okay? Now, as far as the armor or the dress, right? Because it, it, um, it's not just a question of what armor they're wearing, but sometimes it's also a question of what is the quality of the armor that they are wearing, okay? And and the reason why I say that, not that, I'm not saying that because I think if they got lower quality, I'm going to try and, you know, uh, destroy their armor. What I'm, the quality of their armor, okay, uh, is going to tell me something about how experienced they are, okay? So uh, usually when you have somebody that's new, okay, uh, they usually have cheaper armor, okay? Uh, I, when I started doing this, I started out with the cheapest armor I could get. Okay, as people get more and more into it, as they get more and more inve invested in de developing their skills, 
they're also going to invest more and more in getting better quality armor. So when I look at somebody, right, if I can tell, a lot of times I can tell uh, if, uh, if, if, if they're beginners just by, if, are they wearing like really cheap ass armor? Uh, the armor that I would expect from a beginner, or are they wearing a higher quality armor? Now, sometimes you can have somebody that's wearing a high quality armor that looks beat to shit, right? Uh, and that's usually, that again is also an indication because what that's telling me is if, the, if, the, if it's a high quality armor that's like beat to shit, uh, that means they've been fighting for a long time and I'll pro, you know, there's a good chance they're gonna be really, really good. Uh, now, again, that's, uh, these are just indications, right? Because you might have two guys fighting the same amount of time, one guy just you know, replaced his armor, okay? But again, this is something that I can, now, you know, a lot of times you can also tell by somebody's age, right? When you look at them, if, because um, uh, a lot of times you can kind of see their face through the bar grill. Uh, if there's somebody older, right, with, you know, you know that's that's an indication that that they're probably you can expect a lot more from them. They've been a lot, uh, they've been around for a long time. Uh, contrary to what you guys might think, the people that do this type of fighting um, uh, um, are usually older rather than younger. Okay, um, uh, part of, well, one of the reasons is expense. I mean, it's not a cheap sport. It's not it's not a terribly expensive sport, um, but it's kind of hard to get into something like this if you're just. You know, if you're, if you're still working your way through college on your first job. I mean, I didn't start with the sword fighting until I was, I think, about 33, 34 years old. Okay. Uh, I'm now 50, 51 years old. Okay. Um, but uh, one of the things that um, that I have noticed in doing the, in, in playing this, this sport, right, is that uh, um, his thing you can have, you know, his uh, experience uh, and, you know, it usually beats out. Uh, youth and agility. Okay, that's one of the things I have seen time and time again uh, in in this type of a combat sport. Okay, the, the more experienced fighter who might be in maybe not so good physical shape, right? Maybe doesn't have the same stamina. He'll find ways to conserve energy. So the more experienced fighter, uh, a lot of times wins the fight, even though he's lacking maybe in stamina, uh, just by just conserving his energy and fighting the fight that he can win. Right. So he's going to play a lot more defense. Uh, look for openings, not expend energy unnecessarily. Okay, so as I was saying, these are things that you can kind of gauge by looking at the, at, at, at somebody's armor. Okay, uh, uh, how hard you got to hit them, what areas you should be targeting, uh, and what their experience level might be. Okay, next let's talk about the sword. Right, uh, the different types of swords will move differently. Okay, so uh, I got two swords over here. Okay, this is my left. This is a Type 14. Okay, this is a Type X. Uh, you can see the, the Type X I'm, I'm, on this side over here is longer, right? And it's got parallel edges, whereas the sword on this side over here, it's shorter, it's more tapered. Okay, so based on the sword design, the sword's going to move differently. So this sword over here, right? This is a sword that can make really good strikes right from the shoulder okay so with this type of a sword you can fight a boxing style right where you can start, because if you look at boxers the way they fight they usually keep their hands right in front of their face as they're fighting so that their hands are blocking their face well the same deal with this right if i'm fighting with a sword like this i usually keep this sword up here because i'm i'm blocking my face right and then from there i am attacking and coming back to a guard where the sword is in front of my face and is blocked, and this sword is light enough, okay, that I can I can attack that I can make my attacks straight from here, right, from in front in front of my face, basically. This sword over here, because it's um, because it's longer and more blade heavy, okay. This is not a sword that I can just fight from here and and and, and effectively attack. Okay, let me let me demonstrate that. So, looking at this piece of wood here. I'm going to make it fighting from in front of my face, all right? You can see how I was able to just make that attack really quickly uh, and bite into the wood. All right, hold on. Let me get, show you guys that, that cut I just made real quick. So right in front of my face, I was able to make that cut right there, okay? All right, so with the other sword, okay, is that a little bit more? If I try to do the same thing from here in front of my face, right, 
from here, okay, it's really, first of all, it's a lot slower, okay, uh, and, you know, it, it's a lot slower, it takes a lot more effort because I have uh, less room to accelerate the foot. Let me move you up. Okay, so there's the cut that I made. I mean, I, I mean, a lot of it has to do with how the length has to do with how it hit the wood. But you can actually see that the first shot, which is the top one, actually dug in deeper than the second one. Okay, now I'm going to use the same sword. Okay, uh, let's back you guys up a little bit more. Turn the camera. Okay. So with the same sword, if I if I start from back here, right? If I start from, from back here, okay, and I make a cut, okay, now I made a really a much better cut. And this actually hit like right on the flat and still look how see how I made that cut right there. Okay, so that type of a sword is going to um, this is going to favor a style if I am fighting somebody that has a sword like this I can expect that they're gonna fight this from back here or off the shoulder I can expect that they're gonna generate power from the hips right so they they need to generate power from the hips they're gonna do a lot of these rotational cuts right you see how I'm rotating the sword around my head, right? And the reason for that is because this is a heavier sword. Um, it, it needs, it, well, it, not so much that it's heavier, it's more that the um, the weight is distributed differently, okay? Because this is a flatter sword, but it's 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 um, got a wider profile. It's, it's wider up here uh, near the blade. So because you've got more weight, more weight at the front end of the sword, uh, this, this sword, I generally need to accelerate the blows with more hip motion, or I need to do more rotational cuts in order to get it. So the disadvantage of a sword like this, okay, uh, is if I need to move my whole hip to make a cut, okay, or, or do this big, wide rotation, right, um, you can see that coming uh, from further back, okay? You can see it coming from a mile away. Um, so that's a disadvantage to this type of a sword. Uh, but the benefit is that you've got more reach, right? So if somebody has a, a longer sword like this, right? right, They can, see, I can reach with, the, with this sword, can't reach with this sword. So if they are, if they're able to manage the range, okay? They're able to manage the range um, so that they are outside of my range so that they can hit me, but I can't hit them this sword becomes a big advantage, okay? You know, where they can, they can basically play that range game. Now, the other thing that this type of a sword has, because it's a longer sword, uh, it allows for different angles, right? So, with this type of a sword, okay, uh, because of the way that I'm, I'm fighting from in front of my face, I'm generally making straight line attacks, right? I'm not, you know, even when I go around, I'm not traveling too far around, right? But most of the attacks are gonna be in the center area and then, you know, occasionally going out to the side. Really, if I wanna to get to the side, I gotta step, okay? So I can, you know, I, I can make up for the fact that this is a shorter sword by stepping to the side to get the different angles. Whereas with this sword, right, because it's a longer blade, you know, the person, you know, doesn't have to move as much to hit those different angles, okay? So, so they, they can they can they can get different angles with this type of a sword. Um, right, so we covered all that. Now, one of the things I want to point out, if you look at this sword over here, let's 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 consider this sword for a second. Right, let, let's consider the sharpness of swords. Right. So these are real swords. I'm trying to cut a paper here. It's not cutting shit, right? <laughs> Okay, swords are not razors, okay? All right, in order for a razor, in order for a razor to function as a razor, it is because, it is because the, the razor blade is thin, okay? So that allows it, because it's thinner, 
uh, as it moves through material, it doesn't have to push as much material uh, to the side. Uh, a sword, on the other hand, is, is concerned with more than just making a cut. The sword also needs to block other weapons. The sword's also going to hit armor. So this sword, uh, because it's going to hit other things besides flesh, right? If the blade is too sharp, okay, uh, it's going to chip. Okay, so 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 you don't, so these type of this is not a blade that I would even try to sharpen to the point of a razor, but you couldn't anyway, just because of the cross section of the sword is too thick. Uh, now, this sword over here, it's actually a little bit sharper than the other one. Let's try again on the paper if we can get a cut. This sword is a little bit. If I get this just the right angle, we might get. There we go. We got a little bit of a cut there. Okay, so we got a little bit of a cut there. So this sword is a little bit more, um, is a little bit, a little bit sharper than the other sword. Uh, let me make a cut. Let me kind of turn this to an angle here, just so you don't have to bite a little bit. Okay. So, okay. Make one more. Make a little bit higher for cleaner ever. Okay. All right. So that's a good cut right there. So this is now what a sword that's been kind of sharpened to battle conditions, basically, right? Okay, there's the cut I just made, okay? All right, so again, the sword not being super, super cut, that will easily bite into bone, all right? If it can bite into the wood, it can definitely bite into bone. Uh, let's take a look at this other sword over here. Now, this sword is actually less sharp. I mean, it does have an edge on it. Let's see if we can get this to cut paper. This sword is really not gonna cut paper. I mean, in addition to, in addition to this, um, in addition to that being a, a little less sharp, uh, as you can see, the sword's like all like rusty and it's been hitting like a st lots of stuff. Um, so this, this blade's been beat up pretty good. So the other sword is definitely sharper, okay? Definitely sharper. I'm going to strike, let's take a strike. That looks like a clean area right there. Let's take a strike there. Okay. So, let's take a look at this cut. So, this is with a less sharp sword. You can see how it bit into the wood, okay? So, that's the cut I made earlier with the more sharp sword. This is a cut I made with the less sharp sword, okay? So, right there you can tell that uh, a, a sword does not funk, or, or European sword rather, uh, is not dependent on the sharpness, okay? Uh, it's dependent on speed, okay? So when I swing this sword, right, the tip, because it's further out, and the further out the tip is, the more rotational velocity it's gonna have, it is the tip uh, that basically does the, I'm sorry, not tip, it is the speed of the sword that does the work, okay, velocity. So. The velocity of the sword is more important than the sharpness of the sword, okay? As you guys just saw over here uh, on these two cuts. Now, aside from, um, um, you know, this type of a sword is going to um, is going to hit other things besides flesh, right? It's going to hit armor, it's going to hit other blades. Uh, but another reason is I, want, I may want to... I may want to basically grab this sword in certain situations and use it as a short spear, okay? Okay? Or basically use this, okay, to strike like that. I'll do this again. Now. Let me find a. There's a clean area right there. Actually, let me bring this up a little bit closer. So this is called half sorting. When you when you when you grab the sword like this, right, and you're either thrusting, right, you're either thrusting there, right, or you're going, right, right. You see what the impact is doing of being able to, okay, so. Okay, so, so, you know, you use the sword any way that you can make it work for you, okay? Let me back you guys up. All right, so that's another reason why I'm just trying to point out that these things are not dependent on sharpness. They're dependent on speed, okay? Um, so anyway, let's move on. I don't want to get too caught up in swords. Right, one of the things I am going to make is... Uh, when you see me fighting in rattan, okay, this type of a sword here, which has a, this, this has wood on the inside, right? It has less weight over here. This sword over here, 
this sword over here uh, basically is going to move this rather this sword here is going to move in a similar way to this sword over here okay so i built this to mimic a type x okay so with this i have to basically use my hips right if i'm going to throw the blows or i have to use rotation blows i can't just fight this and shoot the shots out like that because there's only so long i'm going to be able to blast right see it's really hard for me to generate any power just going going like that right but if i wrote if, if i wind up the sword right right if i go like right you can see how that's you know so if i'm coming up boom okay now i'm able to generate po uh, more force because i am accelerating it i'm making a rotational cut and i'm able to strike so uh again this goes back to when i look at somebody's sword and i see that they're holding something like this or i see that they're holding something like this it gives me an idea of how they're going to be moving with that sword. Uh, versus if they have something like this, right? If they have something like this, with this I can make a really fast strike, really fast just from here, right? Just because, uh, you know, the tip is lighter, most of the weight is back here, and that allows me to move the sword. Uh, so you have the disadvantage of shortness here. Um, the other sword does hit harder, okay? So this sword over here was designed to be used from horseback by cavalry, okay? Uh, so knights use this from horseback. So if you're high up here, you're mainly using the momentum of the, of the horse to strike either across or down. Uh, if you're on foot, you still need to be able to use certain techniques to make this sword work, okay? So those are the techniques I've been describing to you guys today. This type of a sword on the other hand uh, would have really been favored by people on, on foot, right? If you're on foot, you know, um, first of all, the other sword is more likely to drag on the ground, right? Just because it's longer. You kind of have to hold this almost at an angle. Right? You can, at my belt, it basically, it, it doesn't quite hit the ground, but this is gonna get a little bit more in my way. Whereas something like this is a lot more easy for me to carry as I'm uh, moving around on the ground. Because remember, um, with these type of weapons, people sometimes march for weeks just to get to the battlefield. Or if you're standing guard duty, right, you don't expect stuff to happen. So you want something that's convenient, light, that's going to get the job done. Uh, you don't, you know, because, because you can always get a pole arm or something, right? You can get a big pole axe. But if you're really not expecting anything to happen... You know, why carry something big and heavy like that? You'll carry something small, compact, and convenient. So this is like really like a, the modern day uh, equivalent of a like a, a, a subcompact pistol. Okay. Um, so let's move on. Oh, one of the other things I just mentioned is as far as this sort thing, if you're fighting with something like this, right? And I did tell you guys that something you know, with this because you need to use more hips. Because you need to use more rotation, it's easier for the other person to see. Well, one of the options is to use the shield to cover that up, right? So with something like this, you don't know where the sword is going to come from because I'm using the shield not just to block, but to hide my sword and to hide my angles of attack, okay? So that's another way that you can use a large shield in conjunction with, uh, with a, um, a long sword like this. Right, so this requires more wind up, right? So you can start from back here, you know. Right, so you know, the person, you know, the person doesn't know exactly where this is going to come from, okay? Um, now, uh, actually, before I move on with the sword, uh, let's say you see a sword like this. Okay, now this sword over here, even if this had a sharp edge, there's simply not enough blade mass there. For this to do anything, right? Because if you remember earlier with the blunt sword, I was able to bite into the wood. I cannot, I cannot bite into the wood with this. This is basically a, a short spear. Okay, the purpose of this is to stab. Okay, this is a stabbing tool. I want to keep you at distance and stab you with this. Okay, um, so if you see a sword like this, you can expect that they're going to try and maintain di distance. Uh, they might use cuts. Right, but that's just to create opportunities for the thrust. Okay, the thrust is what kills 
with a sword like this. You can strike the hands or something to disarm the person. You can you can annoy somebody with cuts with a sword like this, but the thrust is, is ultimately what's going to defeat them. Um, uh, if you look at this sword here, I also brought this sword out for a demonstration. If you look at the blades between these two, so this is something, this is somewhere between between those two swords, right? So it's at the at the tip, it's thin, but it's got a little bit more mass back here. So this is more of a cut and thrust sword. Um, so this is going to make nice, you know, this can make cuts. It's not going to make a cut anywhere as good as this. But it's going to make cuts better than the rapier over here, right? So this is what you normally refer to as a cut and thrust sword. Again, this is mostly used in unarmored combat, right? You're not going to, you know, ideally you're not going to go into a battle with this, right? You want something with a little bit more blade mass. You know, this is something that you could take into battle uh, if you were on foot. This would be ideal for a battlefield, okay? Uh, this is, I mean, not that it never went on the battlefield, but it's just not ideal, right? Because remember, you might be fighting heavier weapons. So next, uh, let's talk about the shield. Back a bit. So with the shield, the first thing I want to know is how is it strapped? Right? If the person has a shield, how is it strapped? Because here's a forearm strap shield. This is really strong. Okay, uh, a shield like this, for example, that center grip. Okay, right. The center grip shield is nice because this allows me I can get the shield out of the way. I can get this really low or really high, right? So this offers me a lot of flexibility. Uh, however, the problem with this type of a shield is if somebody hits it, it's gonna turn, okay? So this has, you know, if it's hit on the edges, you can get this to turn. Right? It doesn't matter if it's a tight, or a large buckler or something like this, you can hit this on the edge. This is gonna wanna turn. And if you, if you do this to somebody, that's gonna distract the shit out of them, you know? That, you know, because now they wanna try and get this straight. So that's a good way to annoy people if you're fighting them with a center grip uh, shield like this. You know, get this to rotate on them uh, and now get them thinking about trying to get their shield straight while you're attacking them. Right? So, so, so that's what, again, this is all about things I wanna look at when I'm fighting people. How is the shield strapped? Where are the strengths and weaknesses? I wanna know. Where are the corners? Where are the edges? Right? Does it have corners? Because with this type of a shield, the way it works is I use the corner mostly to block my head up here. This corner basically blocks my leg down there. That corner basically blocks the back of my head if something starts coming around. Uh, but I'm primarily blocking with the corners on this type on this type of a shield. Uh, and usually what I'll do is, you know, I'm using a combination because remember, with this type, when I fight, I'm normally fighting with a sword that I, in front of my face, that's light enough that I can shoot out like that. So I'm using a combination of, of this sword. This is attacking, but it's also coming back to the defensive position. But as far as the shield, that's what I'm looking at. How is it strapped? Where are the edges? Where are the corners? Uh, if it, if the shield does not have corners. If it's like a round shield, like a kite that's kind of round on the top, or you know, they, what that what that means is that now the person usually has to sword block their head, because otherwise, see, with this I can put, I can bring the corner up and kind of block my head. But if this was round, now I gotta bring the shield real or much higher, which is going to expose my leg. So usually people that don't have corners on their shield, uh, they tend to do a lot more sword blocking. Okay, so again, this is something that I can expect. Uh, based on the shield type. Does it have corners or does it not have corners? Uh, how is it strapped? That's going to tell me a little bit about what flexibility they have because with a shield like this, like, yeah, I can do that, but not as quite as comfortably as I can do it with the other shield. All right, lastly, uh, not lastly, uh, almost, uh, let's talk about blocking, okay? Um, so I, I, I started introducing the idea. Now, again, we're talking about here, as far as blocking, trying to observe how your opponent blocks. So a lot of times, uh, once we start fighting, unless my opponent like just jumps at me, if we're kind of like trying to size each other up, what I will do, right, is I will, from the, from, kind of from the edge of my range, to a place where I can kind of, where I can reach their shield, right, or their sword, 
but not but not necessarily them right because chances are if i can't reach their body they probably can't reach mine unless their weapon is a lot longer than mine um what i want to do is i want to sit at a range where i can reach their weapon and basically i'm just going to start throwing shots into their weapons and their swords to see how they block okay um so uh, different people block differently so with a shield like this you know i mean are you blocking at the source like like this or are you punch blocking are you going out to it are you using the sword to block high and and the shield to block low are you doing like a left right thing where this blocks the left side this blocks the right side you know how how does this person block okay um so that's one of the things i want to try and gauge before i really get into the fight with somebody I want to throw some shots from the edge of my range and just observe how they block. Because you might also have somebody that, yeah, they block, but they also immediately counter, okay? So I want to know, if this, is this a person where as soon as I throw a shot at them, they're going to immediately counter? And if that's what they do, is there a place that, is there, is there a place that they particularly counter? Because uh, people that counterpunch usually train uh, to counterpunch with one or two preferred shots, right? So you might have somebody where as soon as you hit them, right, they take the block and immediately counter to the leg. You know, that's that's their preference, you know? Or you might have somebody that as soon as they take a block, they immediately counter to the head, right, on the right side. Um, or you might have somebody that as soon as, as, soon as you move, right, uh, they'll immediately punch out to, uh, to stuff your sword, right? They might throw their sword into your sword. So these are things that you can kind of probe uh, from outside the range and find out what your opponent is going to do. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about the range itself, the distance that we're going to be fighting at. Uh, and basically, there's I mean, once you get in range, because there's there's basically three distances: you, you're up close, medium range, and out of range. Let's take the out of range out of this for a second. Out of range is where the guy can't touch you. You could be doing jumping jacks back there. He can't, you know, he can't hit you. Uh, in, inside of the range, right, you can be fighting at a position where basically you, you're at, at the edge of your range, he's at the edge of the range, uh, and you can just like kind of like just barely, you can make contact with each other, but you can barely get to each other, right? Then you've got like a close range, you're fighting like up here, right? And then you've got like somewhere in the middle over here. So one of the things I try to gauge is what is my opponent's preferred range okay where do they like to be is this a guy that prefers to fight from out here right is that what they're best at they're really good at sniping all right uh, or you find somebody that's a really in close fighter that really wants to be in close you know or, you know maybe maybe they have a a style that really favors this or you have like a medium range fighter so if you once you kind of if you're able to figure out what their preferred range is what you can do then is Fight them in some other range other than the one that they prefer, right? So if you've got a guy that likes to fight you at a distance, that would prefer to keep you at a distance, close in on him. You know, chase him down. Get really close. Fight him someplace where he doesn't want to be. So these are the things that I try to figure out uh, as soon as possible, right? At the beginning of the fight, if possible. Sometimes you're going to figure it out throughout as the, as the fight progresses. Uh, but you want to figure these things out. Let me give you guys kind of like a... A recap. So we covered a, a whole lot of stuff. I mean, if you're still with me at this point in the video, you're really interested in this kind of stuff. So the first thing I need to know is this guy, is my fighter a lefty or a righty? Okay. Um, you know, because that's going to tell me something about which side they're going to favor attacking me from. Um, their height and weight. Okay. That's going to tell me something about what their reach is, what angles they're going to be attacking me from, uh, and what their speed is going to be. Okay. Next, I want to know something about, I want to observe their their armor and the quality of their armor, right? So I know how hard I got to hit them, right? Are they wearing armor at all or is it unarmored combat, okay? Um, you know, so that's so I need to figure out what the calibration is, how hard I have to hit them. Um, I need to figure out what the target areas are. You know, maybe they're wearing plate armor where I have to target them only in places where they don't have armor, right? And then that's, and also the armor, the quality of the armor, Right, how new it is, how good it is. Uh, it might tell me something about their experience as far as what I can expect from them. Okay, um, the sword itself, right? That's going to give me some useful information. That's going to uh, that's going to tell me. Uh, you know, first, I want to know is it is a sword that favors cutting 
or is it a sword that favors thrusting? Okay, because um, you know, clearly this is a thrusting sword, right? Uh, this is a sword that's got like almost no blade mass. This wants to thrust, right? This is a sword that kind of does both, okay? Although it kind of does both, but things that do both you often don't do either very well. So this is really good in the thrust, but, but it's a much shorter blade, right? So that's what you're giving up here, right? Because you have a little more blade, more blade mass in the back so that you can make uh, a cut. The way that was achieved was by shortening the sword up, okay? So here's, I have a sword that's good at both cutting and thrusting, but I got there by shortening the sword up. Um, no, as far as the sword, I, I wanna know if I, if I have a cutting sword, a thrusting sword. Uh, is it a fast sword, right? Is it a really fast sword? Or is it a long sword, right? Is it, is it, a, is it a sword like this? That's long, that's gonna have some reach to it. Or is it a sword like this? That's gonna be shorter, but faster, okay? So these are the things I wanna know. I wanna know what to expect from my opponent. Um, and that's also gonna tell me something about uh, the line of their, their, their lines of attack. Are they gonna be mostly making straight line attacks, right? Or is the sword long enough so that they can try and play off of the angles, right? Try to get, you know, tr you know try to get around the shield, right? Um, uh, the shield itself, first thing I gotta know is it, how is it strapped, okay? Is it, is it center grip, right? Center grip being... Center grip like this, right? Is it a center grip or is it forearm strap, okay? So the center grip is gonna be more flexible. You can move it a lower place. The forearm strap one's gonna be stronger, right? Uh, you know, you can basically, that's something that's not gonna be, you, you can't move around as easy. Uh, and also I wanna know what the edges are, uh, where the edges are, and what, you know, if it has any corners. The, the importance of the um, edges, because basically you generally want to, you want to basically follow, your attacks should follow the edge line. So uh, if I'm like this, right, if I'm holding the shield like this, you want to angle your blade so that it, it follows these edges. If I turn it like this, now you're going to angle it like this, okay? So you're going to angle your attacks uh, to the edges of my shield, okay? Um, so a lot of times if I fight, you know, one of the things I'll try and do is I'll try to ro keep this in motion a little bit. This way my opponent doesn't know exactly what my preferred, uh, uh, you know, positioning is. So it's a little harder for them to calculate at what angle, you know, they, they need to throw a shot to line up with my edge. Okay? Um, so, but that's one of the things I want to figure out. What, how do we, t how, how does this person like to line up his shield and what, what are the edge angles going to be like? Uh, next. Blocking, okay. So I, I basically I want to throw some probing shots out there from the edge of my range to figure out, um, you know, does this person shield block, sword block, uh, you know, how, how do they block various shots that come at them? Uh, you know, do they do like a high low defense, left right defense? Do they step in, step out, step out? Do they punch block? So these are all things I want to try and figure out as quickly as possible uh, in the fight, preferably before the fight really gets started. But you know, if not possible, then at least in the early part of the fight um, and range. Figure out what your opponent's preferred range is, and then try and fight fight him in something other than what they would prefer that you fight them in. Uh, so we covered. A lot of stuff here today, okay? Uh, if you're still here, then like you're like really into this stuff. Uh, if you're not here, then that's fine. I, I mean, I, I cover a lot of things in my channel. Uh, some things are gonna appeal more to other people, you know, some people versus other people. Uh, but but I, I, I threw out a lot of it, uh, a lot of it, that stuff out there. In um, I have covered some of this stuff in other videos, but I haven't pre I haven't um, uh, presented it from the perspective of like. When I'm about to start a fight, what am I looking for? Okay, what are the things I'm trying to look for in my opponent so that I can, especially if it's somebody I've never fought before, so I can quickly, uh, for, you know, formulate a, a strategy in my mind of how I'm going to fight this person. And some of the things that I've covered here today are, are going to apply to other martial arts, okay, or 
you know, other combat sports or even like some, you know, just, just regular self-defense type of situations, you know, uh, that you might find yourself in today. So that's one, of the, that's one of the reasons why I really like doing this stuff because there really is a lot of uh, modern day application to this. Um, you know, I covered this uh, in, in another video, but uh, a sword like this, okay, this, you know, this is going to move in a very similar way to a long, to, to a crowbar, basically, right? Um, it's going to move in a similar way because a crowbar tends to be uh, very front heavy, okay? Uh, whereas this, this type of a sword here, right, is going to move very similar to a hammer, okay? You know, just the way that you would, you would, you know, if you think of how you hammer nails, okay, this sword wants to move like that. So, so training with these type of uh, weapons kind of prepares you to use other modern day tools to defend yourself if you need to. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.